So Greg and I have to cut all of these pieces of trim. These are the Z flashings that will hold down our trims and be fastened to the roof deck, but be hidden and not able to leak because water can't get to them. But it is a lot of work. I don't know if a manufacturer pre-produces these. So if, if they manufacture their panel, they're gonna know exactly what the width is and then they can produce like your, your standard Z clips. But we don't have that right now. So if somebody does know where you can get that pre-made Z clip, uh, that would be awesome. But the end result is something like this, where this is gonna sit in the panel. Water will not be able to go up into um, the flashings because there will be double beaded, beautiful, beautiful tape ran right underneath here, screwed down, giving us a nice seal. So now I've got a template here and I'm marking and Greg is gonna use his snips to start cutting them. And then when I get caught up with the markings, I will help cut. All right, let's get this trim marked and snapped. Yeah, you're gonna mark your edge, then we'll go down the roof and I'll do my edge. Now, listen, I don't want it tight down. Go just right here and just go up. Push it flush back like yep, that. Yep, yep, and mark that rib. Yeah? Yeah. All right, so we're using a piece of the wall flashing. This is what's gonna be on the wall. This is gonna protect any moisture from you know, going back behind these roof panels and we're just placing it where it's gonna go and marking the face. That way we can figure out where our Z channel goes. Okay. I always try to walk on the ribs of the metal. That way if there's a nail head potentially sticking up or an imperfection in the sheathing or something, you don't wanna dimple the metal. So by stepping on the ribs, you kind of avoid a dimple in the flat. Just wrap it around your finger because I'm going to pull it tight. Yep. We've got these trims that we just pre-made right here. And these are going to go on the panel to those marks that we just snapped. So right like so. The double beaded beetle tape will go right underneath there, we'll screw through and it'll give us a nice watertight seal. Now we have to just mark where this double beaded beetle tape needs to go. So it's important to, when you do this, to make sure that your tape gets in along the edges really good in these grooves on each side of the rib. You don't want to just be loose there for two reasons. One, obviously we want, we want a good seal so that water doesn't go there. But two, because when we go to put our trims in there, they're cut to go in nice and snug. And if it's a loose job and it's kind of sloppy, then it won't, the trims will be tough to get in there. So you can see how these pieces go in. We just set them right into that double beaded beetle tape, right on our marks. That snap line is very important at this point because we want to make sure that our trim can lock on to this edge when it gets fastened down and it doesn't stick out too far and it doesn't, it's not up too high because if it's up too high, then the trim won't be able to attach to it. All right, once these are set into the butyl where we want them, now we're gonna fasten them and this is also going to be how the panel is gonna be fastened on the roof because remember these panels were all fastened through slots on the edges and so that gives movement in the panel well you don't want it moving and falling down the roof you want that panel to be able to expand and contract something needs to be fixing it to the roof so now we're going to be able to fix it up here and that's also going to be securing this trim down and we're going to make sure we're going through that butyl tape so here at this detail i think you got two decisions uh, two ways of doing things. You can either run your hip cap or you can run your connection trims first. I always choose to run my connection trims because I think it's easier to kind of seal off this area with the connection trims and then run your hip cap right over top. Also, it planes in a lot better and looks a lot cleaner. If you run your hip in 
it makes this corner get kind of weird and all of a sudden your trims are kind of getting lumped up versus this hip cap can naturally flow right over top and if any water gets behind here which it, it won't probably um, it can work out the roof thanks to gravity and we can do some details to make sure that any water that gets under the hip cap at the top doesn't get down here into the hips okay so this first piece of connection flashing i've got to bend around and i've left it kind of long for at the moment and this is going to go something like so so i'm just going to mark All right, so this detail here, I'm gonna make it so that this connection trim will run up over the valley, and then this one will come down and miter on the valley. So we're just gonna continue to run the double beaded butyl tape right up and over, doing our best to get as tight as possible. Remember that up underneath here, there is a potential for water, I guess, to work its way back up, but this is all sealed off. Here I'm dealing with two different angles. So six inch trim on this slope is not the same as six inch trim flat. It's gonna not be a perfect match here. It's gonna be as close as I can though. I've never done this before, so just kind of winging it. will be quite interesting. It's a little bit of a tough thing to do. Okay, now time to put the trim on. and get yours where it goes, Greg, and then we'll kind of work it. Okay. All right, now we've got to do a piece that's going to overlap it like so, which I can go ahead and probably use this as a little template. Pretty dang close. I like that. I like that a lot. Transfer that over. Oh, wait, adhesive? Uh, Somewhere in there. All right, take a 
it back out. This is going to kill my finger. What a punch. That through. Damn, that is clean though, dude. Wait till you see that one. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. You did your best and the rest. That's what I did. That's really all you can do. All right, now that that's done, go ahead and get this piece of flashing on here. Let's go 109 and a quarter, 103 and, let's say 103 and a half. Yeah, let's put it on there and see what we got. So about where you're going? Right there. And I could call, okay. Let me do my vent on it. Maybe we didn't get to it, but it's coming in nice and nice. Make sure you're where you like it. Yeah? There. So to figure this angle out, I'm just going to set it right at the point where I want it and then measure it at six inches, which makes sense because these flashings are six inches. So it should be in in essence, a six inch miter of sorts. I see that's pretty dang close. Pretty dang close. So I'm gonna be somewhere like that. I'm not sure why that's not looking very good though, so hold on. I'm not sure why, because this is literally the exact same cut as the other side. Hold on. Okay, let's take a look again. Man, I don't like that at all. What the? No. I mean, it's fine, but... Maybe it'll go in more when it actually goes in. I don't know. That's not at all what it was. So I'm not sure. Are you all the way against the wall? Yeah. No. I mean, it's definitely not horrible, but it's like I'm catching on something that I wasn't before. Okay, you got it marked? Wait, what? Let's go back where you were. There. Here, switch it around. We'll check it, then we'll uh, put sealant on it. Right. Okay. All right. Yep. Throw some sealant on it. Right there. Okay. Is that good for you? I think so. You good there? I think so. I hate when you say think so. Be confident. Can you trust me? You can say I think so on that one. <laughs> I did that on purpose. I just don't know if I I thought, man, if I do that again, I'm gonna crack his knuckle. <laughs> I think it is, that's why I say I think so. Yeah, that's good enough for me. I trust you. I mean, whether you but when you say I think so, stuff. when you say I think so, I feel like you're kind of like, eh. Well, I think so, but I don't know if you think so, you know? Uh, it's true. That's valid. All right, cool. All right, I gotta, I gotta clean up here, man. That's, that's, I think so, anyway. Oh, what? I think so. 
All right, so with the hip, what I need to do is locate exactly where my hip's gonna go so I can put my Z down and, uh, and get it secured. So we're gonna take a piece of the hip flashing. It's gonna gently set it here and I'm just eyeballing because this is gonna be straight enough for what I'm doing. I'm just gonna mark on this trim where it's going and we're gonna move it down to the bottom and we'll do the same thing. All right, and now that we got those marks, what we can do is snap a line to determine where these guys are gonna go, which they go in between each rib and that this edge right here, the hem on this panel will lock in there and that's what will secure this down. Essentially, once again, we're gonna have a trim that will finish off everything, cover up of any fasteners and be completely fastener free uh, penetrating the roof deck. We'll have a couple rivets that will hold this together, but they're not even gonna be visible and uh, they're not gonna be penetrating the roof deck, which means we don't have to worry about leaks getting underneath the panel and ruining anything uh, down below in the sheathing. Okay, cool, man, thank you. So I like to do this even though I probably don't need to do this on every one, uh, cause I can kind of eyeball where my butyl tape needs to go, but it honestly just makes things a lot easier, guaranteed, that sort of thing. So this right here is the double beaded tape. It's double beaded because it has two beads and it has this like recessed area in the middle. The goal is to hit the fastener in the middle. And this is what we put between our two metal flashings. Well, actually between the roof and the metal flashing. And that's what's gonna create the seal here up this hip. So now that I have those marks, well, what I'm going to do is run this butyl tape I'm just gonna leave that there. So now what I can do is start putting on these, uh, I call them closure strip. Note that I'm starting at the bottom for a reason. I'm starting on the bottom because I want my overlap to be right here. Because when I put my ridge cap on, I'm gonna, or my hip, whatever, I'm gonna be sliding it up the roof. If I go to slide up, I wanna be able to see what I'm hitting so I can adjust it. If it's underneath, it might be harder for me, and you'll see it as I go, uh, it might be harder for me to do that. Okay, so we're gonna get this lined up. I'm gonna let it overhang a little bit, make sure that I'm where I'm gonna be. And what I wanna do here is mark this angle here. And now I can see my angle here that I'm going to go with. It's not an exact 45, it won't be. It'll be just off of a 45, 46 point whatever. I'm gonna wanna bend, I wanna bend this. So let's say that's about an inch. We're gonna go just a little bit more. So we're gonna go inch and a quarter further. Okay, so now that I've got this bottom marked, we're gonna get rid of these hems. Those are gonna be in our way. So I'm just taking my snips, opening that hem up, and then we're gonna cut it out of the way. Makes it a little bit easier to open these up so I can remove them. We're gonna work this bend up, not all at once. This is always a little bit of a tricky part because I kind of want to keep this, but knowing exactly where it's going to be is always a little bit tricky. So we're going to, just because I've done this a couple times, we're going to kind of guess about where it's going to be. I'm losing it. We're 
we're gonna bend this over. Now we're gonna try and work up this other side here. All right, now before I cut this, I'm actually going to go ahead and put this on, make sure I like where it's at, then I will cut it. And this is the fun part. So hopefully it goes on good. But before we get that too far, we also need to deal with the end here. I need to make sure because this is gonna get overlapped, I need to make sure that I've got the proper notches out. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark six inches, both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and snip this off and then we're good to install it. All we're gonna do is hook, hook that Z and hopefully we are able to slide right up this roof. And now you're gonna see why I wanted those overlaps that way because it, it's gonna easily go up the roof. And anywhere that it doesn't wanna go, I can usually manipulate it without getting up there. I might have to do a little bit like right there. Let's go ahead. See right here? All right, that's my last, my last rib I'm gonna go over there. Let's take a look at this detail down here. Oh, I love it. Freaking love it, Greg. Oh man, and this hip looks beautiful, dude. Beautiful. No, it's, it's team, team, dude. I didn't do anything. No, come on, it's team. All right, so now I can go ahead and clip this off since I like exactly where it is. And there we go, that is the bottom of the hip. I don't know if I really need to do that, but I didn't like it. So we're gonna clip that off. This is, you know, it's not like super tight. It doesn't need to be because it can't go anywhere. The goal is for this to shed water, okay? It's not structural. It's clipped on to these pieces of trim that are screwed and fastened down into the roof deck and all covered. So this is a nice, a leak free detail, but now we got the piece up there that we got to do. So let's go up there and get that cut. It's a little bit tricky. All right, since this is not going to take a full piece of hip cap, I'm going to cut my hip down so that I can make a template for my top to make sure I get the right cut. So I'm going to get a rough estimate as to how long this is going to be. So we're going to be about 88 inches plus a little bit, which means we're about, let's just say eight foot. So I can cut myself a little piece. Oh, I just picked up a piece of trim okay so what I've got is a small piece and all I'm going to do is use it to figure out exactly what I'm going to do up here on my angle so we're going to line this up where it's going to go looks pretty darn close I would say nice thing is with a template you can do your test fits and then be like oh yeah I don't like that and then make an adjustment without having to make a whole new piece because you just adjust your cut on your template. And once you get it perfect and where you want it, then you can transfer it over to your actual piece. So now I have my template and I can set it on here, verify that it's a nice, look at that. It's an, well, you can't see as good as I can, but that's a nice clean cut. So I know that that's going to be good. So what that allows me to do is I can come down here where I made those notches, put a mark on the center, and I'm just gonna give myself a couple light uh, scribe lines here. And we can measure from the peak or the point up here to that mark. And that is 87, 87, more like 9 16 And now I can take this template, I can measure 87 and 9 16 on my trim, set my template at 87 and 9 16 from the finished edge, and that should be where I'm going to bend up this flashing here so that I go up the wall ever so slightly. So 87 and 9 16 I can take my piece, set that, 
right at 87 and 9 sixteenths. All right, before we get too crazy, I've learned this. Get yourself some blue masking tape. I'm gonna tape down the center of this because that gets sometimes ruined. And then we're gonna tape where it's gonna end up being. Just to prevent any uh, potential scratches there. That way we can set this guy up here, see how it does. All right, that's good, that's good. I like that. Um, yeah, that looks good. See, typically you want this joint to be in the middle. That way, because what I have to do is I have to open the hem up on this panel, get it over, and then close it back up. Otherwise, there's no way to slide this up. You can't just run it right on the top of this. You almost have to lift it up and get it in yeah, this is, this is gonna be a fun one. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of thinking here. So what I've gotta do is I've gotta open the hem up to here, and I'm gonna cut the hem off to this location so I can get past this rib, and you'll see kinda, of, oh boy. You'll see kind of where my problem lies with this sort of a process, but it's going to, it's going to work. All right, before we put this second piece on, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set a rivet here. And this will be just to, obviously, we don't want this piece of trim sliding off the roof. So you can see here, I've got this opened up and a little bit of a tab. This tab here is past this rib, otherwise I would never get it to fold back over. And now what I need to do is, Greg, maybe you can just hold this up. Going. Going. Yep. All you. Okay. So I just need to be careful with this edge here. This is the part that's the worst. And I'm just gonna keep sliding this up and this is the hard part. But now we're on the blue tape. Okay, so now we've got this up here, these tabs here, I'll be able to bend them back over. There we go. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and take these tabs, bend them under. That's gonna lock back over that little cut I made. Now the last thing I've gotta do is I'll just go ahead and I'll kinda put some sealant right here. This is the only spot I even worry about. But remember guys, this was all detailed here for water. So I'm not gonna have much water here anyway. I'm gonna have corner trim, I'm underneath the soffit, and I will put some sealant here just to do some protection. See all that sealant pops out of there. So I, I'm not too worried about that. And like Greg said, we'll tape over this just to add any additional protection. But now this hip is not going anywhere. Nice and clean, no fasteners, not bad. Not too bad. A plus. So ridge cap is just like hip cap. We're gonna mark our ends with a piece of trim so we know what we're doing. And we're gonna snap a line between them. We're gonna set our double beaded butyl tape and uh, get our Z flash Z closures. Z -closure. We're gonna get those mounted and then we'll put our ridge on. So nothing crazy.
Okay, so we're gonna go eight foot five. That way we're sticking out past that a little bit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm always for sure my fingers are gonna go. Yeah. All right, Greg, I wanna come in here and I wanna get everything nice and then I'll back it off and pull my, put my rivet in. Well, we finally got the roof details done. We've got the hip caps done. We've got the ridge caps done. We started pulling some of this plastic off, but we're gonna leave the plastic that is underneath where the siding still needs to be installed. Um, that's my wife, I'm gonna answer her. One second, YouTube. So, roof done. So that's awesome feeling. We've got a couple panels to put on the little roof, ridge cap, and then we've got two upper walls of siding basically to put up, and then it's on to our siding details, our trims, our battens, and window trim, stuff like that. So we're definitely moving in the right direction. Uh, it was nice to have a non-rainy, non-windy day. We got a lot done. Let's hope for some more of those. But until the next time, I'll catch you guys later. I'm gonna get out of here. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that thumbs up button. Maybe subscribe if you want. And we'll catch you on the next one.